Disclaimer, please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk, then play at half speed. Thank you. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to the Fire Pit Podcast. I'm Josh, your commentary host. Yes, it's a thing now. And tonight, we have a very special episode for you. It's our first skit commentary episode. But first, a quick disclaimer, specifically those new listeners who joined us on this podcast episode. This is normally a movie review podcast. Typically, we pick a destination film, and then we pick a list of movies leading up to that in a six-episode journey, we call it. Each episode, we will give our expectations, we will watch the movie, and then we will give our final thoughts on it and have a fun group discussion, talk about the movie. It's a lot of fun. In those episodes, we have scripted segments that are skits that are kind of related to the episode. More on that later. But we do recommend you find past episode about a movie that you like and go list, give that one a listen. We don't fully recommend starting with this one, but we can't really stop you. Because if you want to listen to this one, feel free to do it. This is a disclaimer, not a cop. So, yeah, do what you want. But anywho, what's going on in this episode? You are listening to, as mentioned before, our very first skit commentary episode. You're probably expecting Taxi Driver. But as Ian Malcolm said in Jurassic Park, life uh, finds a way to screw with our podcast. Needless to say, we had a perfect storm of events, the three of us did. Personally, I got sick, so I couldn't record last weekend. I was out of it. But there was so many things this past week that caused us to delay the episode we did get taxi driver recorded it's not going to be out by tonight yesterday i don't know when you're listening to this but fear not we plan for everything anywho as mentioned before we have scripted segments in our podcast specifically the skits if you're a longtime listener you know them and i hope you enjoy them i know we do we invest way more time on them than we probably should in writing them editing them acting in them we fancy ourselves writers and actors At least we think we are. I have a mic. So the reason for this episode, we wanted to go back and listen to old skits, but listening to them can be cumbersome because we have to go get the episode and then we have to skip because they're split up in the beginning, middle, and end of the episode. So this is going to fix that. We have all of the skits from our vacation to termination where the destination film was Terminator 2. Bonus, we have commentary leading into each one of the skits that we've already recorded. We anticipated that life will get in the way. So enjoy our skits which will be preceded by some commentary by the three co-hosts. These, again, are the skits for our vacation to termination. Now, on to the commentary. Thompson, we're live. Are we live now? Yes. That's what we're live now means. Welcome back to the fire pit. You're now about to listen to our sketch for Buckaroo Banzai. This is one that I'm particularly fond of. This is, I think... One of our better ones this season, if I must say so myself. In fact, this journey definitely. <laughs> Not that I wrote it at all. <laughs> I mean, don't 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 break your arm jerking yeah, yourself yeah, off there, yeah, Tom. Seriously, move on. Yes, but yeah, this one starts off the journey for what? What journey is this one? Vacation determination. Yeah. Yep. This is uh, Terminator Two is the destination. And film. the theme yeah. of the uh, movies that we went with my list, and the theme of the list was uh, across the dimensions. So. Mm-hmm. Which turned out to be, well, no spoilers, but this turned out to be a pretty solid journey, if we do say so ourselves. And this episode in particular, too. So, um, I've done the introductions. Uh, Josh or Dan, do one of you want to describe what our audience is about to get into? Uh, Go ahead, Nigel. Well, I think um, this was the skit. Yeah, well, we Josh was on vacation. That was just kind of what we did for the whole kind of the skit was you know i'm on vacation so i was gonna say it's like yeah i was on vacation for that one i read the skit as they were doing because i was driving from ohio to oklahoma very close on the alphabet but not very close in real life they wrote it i read it i didn't make any changes but i did recommend the uh running gag through the uh for the journey which was that um since it's through the multiverse that every single episode involves us in different universes and that the big, the, the reoccurring gag is that our multiverse selves would die in every single episode. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and my thinking on the starting it is 
we had a movie where which ostensibly Buckaroo Banzai discovers dimensional travel, and we were going to end the journey with time travel. So I wanted to do something a little more subversive, like try to anticipate some of these beats and make it a little more, yeah, I guess you could say sabotage Josh's future skits. Like I will steal your aliens and any time travel and have fun with that, buddy. Ha ha ha. Yeah, because I know initially I had reservations bringing back in the space elevator, but then it's like starting to think about it. I'm like, that makes perfect sense. Because this is the first like reappearance of the space elevator since our Bill and Ted episode. Mm, time elevator. It was a time elevator. Yeah. This one turned it oh, yeah, into this time, space. Yeah, the space. this became a space time elevator. Yes, that's right. So that, that, that kind of lent itself into some of the... Because I started... the not to get too much into the story of the skit, but it starts off with time travel and some of the conceits of Terminator anticipating some stuff for aliens, which the Josh then was like, as he said, let's kill ourselves. And then every episode like, we go to different dimensions and see other dimensions of us is supposedly because of the events of that first episode. And that's culminating in what would be what you will find out to be the final skit. But I don't want to spoil too much of this one. Yeah, because at the time we're recording, we're actually about to record episode, was it 83? Yeah. Yes. So you're going to hear in the next skit for Highlander that's going to be playing after this one that that was our first commentary that we recorded. Like, we recorded this one way after we recorded that one. Yeah. Months after. So. Mm -hmm. We know, right now, we know exactly what happens. We recorded them with a one-week delay yeah, and in the upcoming ones, and I I think you were hesitant to bring back the space or the time elevator or whatever, and because you were like well, I don't want to do the same thing more than once or I don't like bringing back the same thing, and I had to remind you that we're we're a, we're a movie podcast and our reviews are serious and stuff, but our skits are comedic and bringing back reoccurring gags and comedies is completely normal, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. like as long as you don't overdo it, but I mean, you know, bringing back skit or, or reoccurring gags and comedies is always a thing. You know? yeah. 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 As long as you don't use the same device over and over again for an entire journey. Wait, he said sarcastically, because that's what we wound up doing. Well, a lot, a lot of our uh, gags too are very much isolated to the journey they're in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do kind of find ways to write them off at the end of the journey or just completely ignore them, like Dan's superpowers and our uh, flying high in the hero's journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. or um, Peggy taking over the podcast, like she yeah. or winning the election and becoming our boss. I think we only made that another gag like once or twice, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. she she transitioned from being uh, winning the election to being our boss flying high to hero's journey. Yeah. yeah, it's acknowledged here and there. It's it's one of those nice to know that there's a universe and we live in it. it reminds people, hey, we've got lives going on. There's continuity. There's things that happen and yeah. they do have consequences or they still do play out. Yeah, I like that too. I like that analogy. And the space elevator was literally just a one-off because I, if you've already listened to our commentary on that one, we haven't recorded it yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was uh, just an idea that I was having because we couldn't use a phone booth. And I was just like, I just thought that was a one-off. And then I think Tom recommended bringing it back mm-hmm. and ended up playing perfectly in with the reoccurring gag for this journey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, the idea of using it for like dimensionals and just killing one another, which will play into the final episode of this season or journey, excuse me, or it could still this yeah. season. We're not finished with the season yet as of this recording. So who's to say what happens? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, space elevators out there and. He's, 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 he's out there, too. Whoa, oh, whoa. Spoilers. Spoilers. Oh, shit, yeah. Whoa. Tom, edit whoa. that out. Um, <laughs> my bad. Yeah, so Tom, edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> but I've said all I can say about this amazing, fantastic, hilarious skit of ours. Yeah. I'm trying to think, do we want to touch anything on the skit? I'm, I mean, the, the editing is top notch. So when you decide to be the editor and you think, oh, I've got an easy sketch. All I have to do is this, this whole thing about an alien egg opening up and killing all of your podcasters. They don't really have a lot of stock audio of 
alien egg, alien spawn, murdering people out there for use. Really measure what you're going to have to do. Because what you think is going to be an easy skit to edit, it's not. Just when you think, and I say this a few times later on, just when you think you have every kind of audio for any kind of situation you can think of, then it's like, okay. Josh writes a skit yes, that Josh, requires... I want you to kill us by someone devouring all of us from the inside out. Yeah. Okay, I need a very specific audio clip of an alien coming out of an egg that's been moistened by a semi-viscous liquid. It's opening at a slow pace. It jumps, leaps, and then it rips open the human chest from the outside in. All right, I'm just going to leave that to you, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, Amy Schumer recently had an interview, so I was able to use audio from that. <laughs> There you go, Dan. I got an Amy Schumer dig in there. I hate her so much. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy the skit. <laughs> yeah, have fun. Amy Schumer raped a guy. Hey, Nigel, uh, mind if I get my laptop back? I'm really going to need it for tonight's movie stream. Um, yeah. Uh, just a heads up, though. I think there's something wrong with it. What the hell happened? Like, I have no idea. I had it on for like, I don't know, like five minutes and it just started like catching on fire all on its own. Is this? Did you fill this with coins? I was mining bitcoins, sir. You know, make a little side money. I mean, that and I think you need a better graphics card. It really didn't work right. That's not how bitcoins work at all. You're in tech support too. You know this. Gee, now how am I going to stream tonight's movie? I just use the spare laptop over there. Fine. Just let me swap the connections. Lord, when was the last time this thing was updated? <sighs> All the time for Josh to be on vacation. Although, with him gone, we can finally watch the movies we really want to watch. Ooh, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Snuff Western. film! What? What? Hey guys, what's going on? It's not mine! Josh. <laughs> <clears throat> Josh, I thought you were visiting family. I am. Then how are you here? Oh, I just took the elevator. Wait, isn't that our time elevator as last seen in episode 43? Yep, I made a few modifications, so now it can travel through not only time, but space. Oh, and dimensions. So uh, I call it the time and relative dimensions. Stop, 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 stop. I'm going to stop you right there. Really don't want to get sued by the BBC. But you did say it could go into space? Oh, yeah. Easy. It's like beep boop and we're there. You want to try it out? Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to space. To infinity and beyond. Don't put that I'm not there. getting sued by Disney. Come back. It's now. I'm So, somebody there? I could have swore I heard something. Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Well, that was certainly an experience. Now let us never speak of it again. Man, I don't know what your problem was. Dan and I had a blast. I know, right? I mean, we laughed, we cried. We caused the collapse of an entire alien monarchy. Good times. Classic elevator fun. In the fire pit. I even got this nifty alien souvenir. Now I just gotta find some place to put it. Guys, you notice anything different about our office? Like what? Like that it's on fire? Oh yeah, it is. I was too busy noticing the armies of cyborgs laying waste to humanity outside. Did one of you plug the Tombot into the internet while I was gone? I don't know. Tom, did you? <sighs> Back to the time elevator. Tom, I swear to God, you're it's always like using Tombot. I can't go on vacation oh, for five minutes and then you into the universe. Oh my God, I'm getting I'm getting tired of for fuck's sake. I'm getting tired of Tombot. Yeah, we need to put him into a box and forget about him for another 20 episodes. 
Is this? Did you fill this with coins? I was mining bitcoins, sir. You know, make a little side money. I mean, that and I think you need a better graphics card. It really didn't work right. That's not how bitcoins work at all. You're in tech support too. You know this. Gee, now how am I going to stream tonight's movie? Well, I just use the spare laptop over there. Fine. Just let me swap the connection. Give me that. Hey. <laughs> There! No more Tomba, ever! He's done! He's to bed! Whoa! Future uses. How can we be sure? No! No! Stop! Bad Tom. We already did the Bill and Ted bit. I get it. This is Terminator 2. Time travel happens. But we're not gonna do a time travel storyline. But Wait, I mean, no, it, it just makes just sense in the plot! And no, no! No! Executive decision! We're saving it for Back to the Future. Wink. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that good. makes sense. Yeah, uh, you know. it's good. Yeah. All right, pass Dan. Give this to me in five seconds. He'll know what to do with it. Oh, um, gross. What the hell is that thing? I don't know. It looks like some sort of alien egg. Hey guys, what's going on? Ah! <laughs> And there goes our setup for the alien skit. Great job, Josh. Back to vacation with you. What, what's crawling out of the thing? Hey, oh, look at how look how cute it is! It's oh my god! Oh, oh god! Tom is dead. What's that bursting out of his chest? Oh god! <laughs> Gross. <laughs> So we are discussing episode 72, Highlander's skit. This was one of our classic, air quotes, classic, where everybody rewrote the script, keeping ideas from the previous ones. Yes. Yeah. It was kind of hodgepodge paper mache of a skit. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly because all three of us were in, well, Tom wasn't, but Josh was out of town. I was off work, but I was hosting a friend from out of town. Peggy, she guest starred on the episode. And Tom was busy with work, too. So it's like we were all three of us really busy and we couldn't do a normal writing session like we normally do. We usually try to meet for an hour once a week before we record to say, hey, what kind of ideas you guys want to do for the skit? And then the three of us kind of brainstorm together. But we never had we haven't had a chance to do that. So that's why the skit was kind of hodgepodge. Yeah, we all kind of talked, at least in chat and previously in previous recordings, like, OK, this is kind of what I want to do. And this I had this idea and this that idea. And we all were like, oh, that's a good idea. That's great. That's wonderful. And then we all forgot <laughs> and wrote our own things. Yeah, it's like Tom wrote his, and I was just like, but this doesn't incorporate a lot of the ideas that we talked about last week. So I wrote mine. Mm -hmm. And then Dan's all like, I like this, but I'm going to change a couple of things. And then he rewrote it. Yeah. Keeping a clue of it. And emotions were shared. Yeah. And, but we ended up going with the final version that Dan wrote. With some, we did add back some of your jokes that I didn't realize I had took out. Like, you're like, oh, I really like the joke about the accents. And I'm like, which joke about the accents? And I reread your script. I'm like, oh, yeah, that is pretty funny. So mm -hmm. we added that. We added some of the Josh stuff back in, and I think we kept the... Tom was the one that came up with the gag at the end where the elevator comes and crushes the bad yeah, guy. That so. was his initial joke that I kept, but I added the stuff with basically the Looney Tunes skit. Yeah. Yeah, my one originally had the elevator crushing all of us as they were attempting to save Peggy, but wound up killing the bad guy, which was not um, Sean Connery originally. That was Josh's idea. It's like, hey, we've got a Sean Connery. I can do Sean Connery. Why are we not having Sean Connery in the skit? Yes, and that did add a new rule to the Fire Pit podcast. We have rules on this podcast, and one of the newest rules now is whenever we do a movie with Sean Connery in it, Josh has to do a Sean Connery bit in the yes, skit. Yes, and we've only broken that rule once by accident, and that was back yeah. in principle. Well, in our, in our defense, we did not have that rule at the time. Yeah, it's a new rule. We That's did. why I said new rule. We added it yes. on Highlander. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's just like the the selection section episodes. Now we have a rule where you need to come up with like one or two movies you haven't seen in the list. Yeah, constantly that, uh, evolving. Yeah, it's a constantly evolving Bible. It's the, we haven't reached the King James version of it yet, but we're getting there. Nope. I think I think I like about this skit in particular is we're kind of solidifying the story arc that we 
kind of plan for the uh, journey because we we try to sometimes we like to have story arcs for the journey, but we like to have them loosely connected. We learned our lesson during the whistle stop tour where everything was connected. It wasn't until the later episodes during that journey that the, they started becoming more relevant to the actual movie we were watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same with the superhero. The superhero yeah. one was pretty rough to do too because that one was like a long story arc that was hard to tie. Although in. I will admit, when Tom was in, was the showrunner on the story arc for Flying High and the Hero's Journey, mm -hmm. I will give you some credit. Even though some of those were some of the most like stressful episodes to try to fit certain things in. Mm -hmm. That's the one that solidified the three-part skit. Mm -hmm. Up until then, we only had one-part skits. Yeah. Maybe the occasional two-part skits. Mm -hmm. But that's what really solidified the stinger as being a scripted segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the three-act structure. Yeah. I learned that in film school. Mm. We know. Yeah. We know. Everybody knows. For those new to the podcast, Tom, yeah. Tom took a year of film school, and he reminds us all the time. Yes, all the time. But the story arc we're going for in this one, basically, we're going to do the reoccurring joke where the air quotes prime crew, a.k.a. the real us's, are hopping through time and dimensions and accidentally killing somebody in every single episode. And it relates to that episode. So, like, at the time we're recording this, we haven't even finished recording Mortal Kombat. So we don't know exactly know how it ends, but we have an idea of what we want to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I do have to say, when we recorded this episode, the final version that came out, I got to give props to Tom. He did a fantastic job editing this. And the joke that he added was separate from what we recorded with the Pokemon joke. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> well, again, I mean, we're all just standing around waiting for Dan's arm to grow back. It's like, we, this needs something funny to punctuate yeah, the boredom. Right. Otherwise, it's just going to fade out to like weird ambient noise like nah, that doesn't land yeah well you know i was just talking about that right before we started recording this was that we've recorded sketches or skits that at the end of the night i'm like that one wasn't very funny it's not a good skit it's not that great and then tom puts the whole thing together and you listen to the episode and you're like wow this is actually pretty funny <laughs> so yeah. it, it, it is the power of editing there's a lot to that 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 trope and i tell you in terms of editing it's always fun to try to find new foley to insert because when i think i have everything that i could use for any potential skit then we have one where you all get decapitated <laughs> and it's like okay do i have something in the chest for decapitation no i do not Okay, what does the internet have for this? Nothing, and now I'm on an FBI list. This is great. <laughs> what can sound I make? Sound of head cutting off. Yeah, sound of head cutting off. Like I'm sure Google or Bing aren't, aren't monitoring that at all. Yeah, so it was a lot of finding squirt bottles, finding ketchup bottles. Katana noises were not that hard to find. Thwacking, smacking, things breaking, squishing noises. Yeah, even the simple skits, like, oh, there's not going to be that much Foley. There's, <laughs> I still have to find something. It always takes me back to the Blade Runner episode when we tried to do our own Foley. And then you came <laughs> out with the episode, and then I was like, I thought we were just going to do our own Foley. And he's like, yeah, we need it. We need the extra Foley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, I'm sure we talk about that in that episode. Speaking of time travel, if this seems weirder to some of you for who have listened to the earlier, I guess, behind the scenes commentary, stuff of this yeah. commentary, um, that's because this is technically our first one. So yeah. much like Doctor Who and this skit, we are going through time and space and not exactly in order. So, yes, because at this point we have plans to produce them. So we're hoping you have already listened to like season one's commentary on our skits and you're just now getting to this one but yeah. this was the first and just mm -hmm. like doctor who you probably shouldn't listen or watch the earlier episodes just um wiki it and start at the fourth doctor and you're yes. good yes 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 Actually, technically, start at the ninth doctor i mean oh yeah 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 start at the yeah start at the you know the 2005 the series and then mm -hmm. go i don't get that reference he doesn't get the reference anywho so uh this is our <laughs> highlander sketch Sketch. Yes. Enjoy. 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 Oi, we be the last three immortals. I long foretold was our final encounter. Yes, but wasn't there foretold to be a neuter? When only four there are that is left of us, shall we meet on the mountain of Ben Nevis? I think it's Ben Nevis. Is that supposed Nevis, to be Nevis, Ben Nevis. Stay in character, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, and it was filth when you failed, Sir Rob Ben Nutsburner. <laughs> that event summoned us here. 
Well, as you say, Dame Peggy, where be he that is late? I just, I just, seriously, why? Why all the way up here? I, seriously, it's the highest mountain. Dude, you told us to meet at the Ben Nevis Church. Yeah, the one down there at the foot of the mountains. Also, what's with the funny accents? Oh shit, you guys are faking accents too? I was only doing it because Josh is doing it. I, I mean, we can keep doing it. I, I, I really want to do an accent. No, 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 it, you ruined it, it's dumb. All right, well, uh, uh, let us commence with the gathering. There can be only one. Wait, 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 let's have a drink first. You know, I, I have this old scotch I was saving just for this. No way I'm chopping off head sober. To the gathering! To the gathering! To the gathering! Pork Mahon! Oh, God, what is this? Oh. <laughs> Tastes like scotch tape. Oh. Oh, oh god, now she's got me doing it. Oh, I was fine before, but oh god. Oh, that's right. The cork rotted like 200 years ago. I knew I was forgetting to fix something. Oh, well, waste not, what not. <laughs> it's like 75% solid, Tom. You don't. It's like eating brown curdled milk. <laughs> Oof. Well, enough talk. There can be only one. <laughs> wait, wait, no! I'm still throwing up! My sword! What the hell? Oh, right. Holy ground. We're on holy ground. We can't fight on holy ground. And now it's raining. I'm not fighting outside in the rain. So now what? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Okay, okay. Now we've all got weapons, and we're far away from the church. We shall battle to the death. But all I have is this old stick you found on the ground. And this is a broken... What, bicycle? Wheel? What, what was this supposed to be? This all seems to be weighted in Dame Peggy's favor. <laughs> I'm tired of this. Which of you will be first? How about me? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! He killed Peggy! Who are you? Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez Conrad. I am the original immortal. Ah, do you feel that? Feel the quickening. Gross. How about you, sir? <laughs> my arm! Oh my god! I'm out. Wait, you can't leave! This is a. No, wait! He's leaving. My arm, my arm, my arm! I mean, look at it like a holy shit! I mean, wait. Will it grow back? Honestly, I'm. Uh, I've been out this a long time. I'm. I've never lost an appendage. Yes, I'm that good. Uh, but I don't know. Will it grow back? I want to see. I. But. No, no, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. I want to see this too. Fine. Look, since this is going to be a while, does anyone mind if I get some Pokemon Go in? I noticed a gym just, like, not too far away. Goddamn Dynamax. <clears throat> hey, look at that, a new arm. Fascinating. But your end is at hand. See what I did there? Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh god. <sighs> 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 Crude and slow, Clansman. Your attack was no better than that of a clumsy child. Well, you know, speaking of clumsy child, Mr. Um. <laughs> I'm out! Get over here, you coward. Yeah, I'm almost here. I just need to hide behind whatever this shade is. Wait, what's, what's this shade that's coming? Oh! Here we are, Pismo Beach and all the clams that we can eat. What a way for an OD friend of the channel to travel in a friggin' elevator. I mean, it's not even glass. Wait a minute. Since when is Pismo Beach in the Scottish Highlands? You know, I bet we should have turned left at Albuquerque. Josh, why are you talking like your Bugs Bunny? Uh, what's with all the morbidly familiar looking dead bodies? Didn't I just kill the lot of you? Nope. 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 You're good. <laughs> Yeah. Wrong Let floor. Me just... Don't push the buttons. Just... There you go. Oh, hey, look, an arm. Yoinks. Couldn't save you for later. 
Gross. <laughs> high five. <laughs> See, I'm high using the dead arm to high five me. <laughs> this is going to get used. That sounds more like you're doing a hand job again. Who says he's not? <laughs> School of <laughs> Hey, what happens in the time elevator? We're, we're right here, Tom. Please pull up your pants. Shh, shh, shh. Just let it happen. Just let it happen. It's like watching a train wreck. I'm going to bed. <laughs> You're about to listen to our skit for the Mortal Kombat episode 73. I, I mostly wrote this one, but uh, lots of good ideas from Tom and Dan. <laughs> I was waiting for one of you guys to jump in there and be like, yeah, this is what we changed. Yeah, yeah, I was, mm, I was going to say, I, I mean, you wrote some good ideas, and then we threw those out, and we wrote better ideas. And then you threw those out and put your ideas back in anyways. And then and then when Tom edited it, I was all like, hey, you ought to do this stuff, this stuff, and this stuff. And he's like, oh, those are all great ideas. And then implemented none of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the writing process. <laughs> we have this system where it's like, we'll record more than we actually have in there. And I had this really awesome joke that I thought was pretty funny where everybody's just like, we're missing something. I don't know. What are we missing? Something's wrong. And then like Scorpion says, get over here. And everybody's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's it. That, yeah, that's it. That okay. It. Hey, hang on, Josh. Let me, let me just crawl under the bus. Help you out here. Um, yeah. I mean, don't need to throw me under cut. there. I'll just go get comfy. Yeah. All right. Once Gross. again, you missed Stay the mark. there. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> now that is the tr that is the dilemma as an editor uh what to keep and what to cut because there are a lot of times and i've probably mentioned this in past episodes this is only the second time we're doing one of these so a lot of it is not just what's funny but what flows and sometimes you gotta cut a funny joke because the momentum it does kind of jagged that flow a bit yeah. And honestly, I mean, I got the joke, but I was like, let's keep it going. Let's, let's, uh. You don't need to defend yourself too much. The skit was still, you, you did an excellent job editing it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one of those things. It's like, oh, I like that joke. Okay. But it sounds, it's a funny skit without the joke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But no, I think in the end, it ended up working out really well. Yeah. Well, I want to call out my two other voice actors here, Dan and Josh. Both of you, fantastic work on uh, voice acting. Bring Aww. Oh, uh, thank this you. Is, uh, no, you again. No. You, Dan, I promised you myself I wasn't going to cry this episode. You've said that so many other episodes. I think probably by this point, who knows anymore. Well, but no, I've said this before, and I'll say this again. If there's anything you can get from this podcast, it's something to put on your resume for better voice acting work because <laughs> you, you guys need to be paid for this. Josh, especially you, your deep voice in this episode, you sound exactly like the guy who's doing Goro. Yeah, I noticed that too. Like sometimes I think that that's that's Tom doing like editing magic with sound but not always sometimes it really is like josh and i really just nail a voice that when i recorded it did i didn't think sounded that great i'm like oh god it sucks and then i hear anyone who's ever listened to them their own voicemail message cringes when they hear their own voice like it's do i sound like that so mm -hmm. sometimes when i'm recording and i'm doing a voice i think to myself that sounds awful that is so bad and then i hear it in the skit and i'm like not bad yeah not bad and josh is a really good voice actor he's way better than he gives himself credit for mm -hmm. well thank you we, we try not to give him too much yeah, credit my because my ego just got i mean ego. honestly yeah you guys are awesome too but i think like i really like uh dan especially dan's physical humor is the best but unfortunately <laughs> he, he oh no he got to flex it in this one a little bit so oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah yeah and then yeah getting my ass kicked and doing paint the fence paint the fence that was fucking funny as shit i i could hear you saying that as i was writing that and i was laughing as i was writing that i'm like I can't yeah hear dan say this yeah i'd like to think two years almost well we're a year in now a year and a half almost into this podcast i'd like to think that when we do when we don't get together to do our what we call our ampersand sessions which because of family obligations and vacation obligations and work obligations we haven't really been able to meet once a week to go over our scripts together so we've kind of reverted back to the old style of somebody writes something somebody else adds to it somebody else tweaks it we argue and then we record <laughs> we've kind of gone back to that which is fine but i think when 
I think we're, we are three of us are getting to a point where we can, we get each other's voices when we write a sketch or we write a, a skit kind of on our mm-hmm. own or add to it. You know, like you'll, you'll come up Josh and you'll say, Hey, or Tom, one of you like, I'll write something down. And Tom's like, actually, I think the joke works better if it's delivered like this. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, you know, I'll I'll speak up and say, mm, actually, it should be Josh says that line, not Tom, because Josh's character is more this and Tom's character is more that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, so I think we do a really good job of it. Yeah, I guess that's another thing we can touch on here. It's like um, getting what our characters don't do or won't do It's uh, We've all established and we probably probably have noticed listeners. We're not the good guys in any of these scenarios a beautiful segue into like the actual content of the story (laughs) yeah yeah you're welcome yeah because the story arc that we're kind of subtle on this one because you know we're since our whistle stop and you've probably heard this a couple of times and our flying high in the hero's journey we we tried to relax on our story arc so this one we wanted something kind of subtle that was just kind of a reoccurring joke throughout all of them is that somewhere the prime us's are floating using that magic time elevator that we introduced but uh, bill and ted's bogus journey <laughs> mucking up all these other realities we uh last episode in highlander we had him accidentally killed was it tom yes and this yeah. episode yeah. it's it's a little more malicious because when i originally wrote it we were intentionally coming here to kill us but then tom one of his input was well why don't we make it an accident like we just wanted to come fight ourselves we didn't intend to kill each other yeah we didn't know that we were going to be made of explodium in this universe (laughs) so which actually i i didn't realize until we were recording it but that does actually play into the mortal Kombat universe because if you ever watch those games or play those games people bleed and are dismembered very easily in those games whereas in Real, yeah. Whereas in real life, it's really hard to dismember somebody, mm-hmm. or it's even harder to make someone like bleed profusely without gashing them wide open. So that that kind of plays into the Mortal Kombat actual universe of people just explode very quickly yeah. and very <laughs> easily. You know, are you all hemophiliacs in this universe? What's the deal? It was actually my daughter who, again, bad parent of the year award, but she's watching me play more the newest Mortal Kombat game a couple of weeks back. And the one of the fatalities is the guy rips the other one's arm off, and she goes, "I don't think arms rip out of sockets that easily." And not I'm like, that "Probably attitude. not. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Probably if you, not. Yeah, if you don't try, but but that's one thing I like. Our characters are not good people. One could argue that they're villainous, but they're not maliciously villainous. Mm. They're indifferent." bordering on it's murder in the second degree homicide in the second degree they don't mean for people to die from their shitting shenanigans but uh you know sometimes it happens but they won't go out of their way to kill yeah yeah the dan josh and tom characters of the skits are apathetic but not malicious or yeah they're not yeah they're apathetic but they're not like sociopathic (laughs) so it's like yeah 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 narcissists at least in this story arc. I mean, they did actively go killing people on the Groundhog Day. Well, that's different. They thought there was going to be a timeline reset. Like <laughs> yeah. in this one. But again, they didn't think it would turn out the way it did. Yeah. Like, oh, they'll be fine. See, they're fine. We got a Groundhog's Day loop. It's fine. Oh, shit. This was a time that didn't reset. And we have murdered people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoops. <laughs> whoops. Well, all right. I think that's all we've got. Yeah, yeah. So enjoy the skit. Who can Dan Ring Scorpion Josh Sub Zero Tom Mortal Kombat We really need cooler names. You know, we could have started a podcast and had new names like every week, but you wanted to practice martial arts instead. No, you misunderstood. I said I wanted to start a martial arts podcast, but unfortunately we can't do a podcast about a sport without actually being good at the sport. I mean, it'd be like having a movie podcast without actually making any movies. Guys, why don't we have cool costumes? Look at that! Look at that! She's got spikes! This is so awesome! I'm just in shorts. Well, I mean, you guys should have at least invested in a gi and a proper belt, just like in Karate Kid. You know, Dan, this this doesn't look like a local karate tournament. <laughs> guys, that dude has a spear in his hand. Look, 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 look,
Oh my god, it's shooting it out and coming back in and everything, and that guy has four arms. <laughs> this is awesome. The battle for your world begins. Sub-Zero versus... Please be me. Please be me. Please be me. Please be me. Please be Dan. 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 Dan. Yes! All right. Just got to remember what Sensei taught me. Wax on, wax off, paint the fence, paint the house, wash the car. Got it. All right, I'm good. Hi there, uh, Mr. Zero, uh, Sub Zero, uh, Mr. Sub. You know, it's it's fine. Um, really looking forward to our fight here. Um, I'm new, but I promise to go easy on you. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, seriously, uh, let's just uh, have some fun. And, fight! Uh, oh my God! Paint the fence! Paint the fence! Paint the fence! Paint the goddamn fence! Quarter circle forward! Back! Back! Forward! Back! Forward! Block! Ah! Dan! I don't think yard work is gonna help here. Did you practice any actual karate? No, just the fundamentals. Run button, run. Oh God, this one doesn't have it. I'm beginning to think that you were just the gardener. <laughs> Try mow the lawn. Mow the lawn. Oh, that connection. Wallace, victory, fatality. 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 Well, Dan's dead. What do you want to do now? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Holy shit, you can die here? I, I guess that's what happens when your body is frozen solid and punched into a thousand pieces. It wasn't the shattering that hurt, it was when my body froze solid that really hurt. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? Dan, why are you blue and transparent? Oh, uh, this is like my soul form or uh, ghost or whatever. Um, I don't know, I just needed to be in the skit. Say what now? The joke only works if you don't overthink it. The next battle begins. Oh, oh shit. shit. Why are you worried, Dan? You're already dead. Oh, um, habit. Scorpion versus Josh. Oh, shit. Get over here. Oh, God. See? He's got that spear thing. It's kind of cool, right? Oh, oh, Josh. Yeah, you gotta watch out for that spear thing. He really likes it. Oh. Uppercut! Uppercut! It's like he doesn't even know what the block button is. Oh, no. Josh, no! Sweep the leg! Sweep! Oh my god! Corby wins. Flawless victory. Fatality. Well, that was embarrassing. It really was. Yeah. So, uh, how do you like being a ghost? I blew myself. Get it? Because I'm, I'm blue. Transparent. Stop. New challenger. What? Tom versus Reptile. He wasn't even on the roster. And why isn't it someone else's turn? Why does it have to be me? Come on. Yeah, Tom, 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 Tom. Josh? We knew what we signed up for. Okay, we didn't really. But you know, we, we, we wanted to get into martial arts. But we would probably still be alive, you know, if we just went with the podcast idea. <laughs> I didn't I recommend it. That joke was a meta joke. Because you see, in the real world... Right. Uh, see, see you in a, a second, second Tom. Tom. Hey, I was, hey, pause, pause, pause. You have to let me check my moveset. I have to get the moveset. Where's my Nintendo guy? It's like, oh, oh, God! Ah, birds! It burns! Ah! What? Why do you keep using the same move over and over again? That's cheating! Ruff! Ruff, why are you not calling the fight? Ow, ow, ow. And I think we have a new contender for chewing on Seer. Yes, we do. Help me! Oh, cruel world, how hath thee forsaken me? Stop poking me! This isn't funny! This hurt! He has acid just shut up, boy. Outworld wins this tournament. <laughs> yes, reptile. Now to watch Earthrealm burn. This is the beginning of the end. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can we take these masks off now? Yes. Oh my god, yes. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my breath stinks. Oh, my beard. Oh, oh, oh. itchy. 
Oh, masks and beards do not work together. What is this, 2020? I know, know, right? right? Bad enough I had to wear a mask like you guys, but did you have to give me the one that spat acid? Christ, I could taste it. Hey, at least you didn't have to shove a fucking dagger into your palm. That shit hurt. Every time. And I'm bleeding profusely. Seriously, I need to go to the hospital. Yeah, why couldn't we have, like, air conditioning arms like Dan? Are you kidding me? I think I, think I got frostbite on my fingers. I had no idea it worked like that. I feel bad for alt me. Yeah, what the hell, guys? I didn't think we would kill them. No, Tom, Tom, Tom. I checked this thing out before we came here. You don't actually die when you get killed in Outworld. See, look down there next to the ring. See, see how alt Tom is now blue too? They just died and became ghosts. And now Alt Tom is a ghost, too. Yeah, and, and you can't kill ghosts. Now all uses get to go be immortal and go on crazy ghost adventures and maybe, like, do a ghost podcast or something. You weak and pathetic fools. I have come for your souls. Oh, no, my soul! It tickles. I'm being sucked to go the good way. Oh, my ghost prostate. I don't think we should stay here any longer. Nope. Nope. Yep. Yep. Nope. Um, um, <laughs> let's let this shit run its course and come back for the sequel or something. Or maybe we don't come back at all. So, <laughs> um, nice knowing you guys. Um, we out. Uh, See ya. Uh, back to the Hope part two is better than part one. Elevator, elevator. Door closed, door closed, door closed, door closed, door closed. <laughs>
Yeah. 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 And, and Dan brought back. Oh God, what was that doctor's name? The, Doctor um, Doctor Butcher. What was his uh, German name though? Uh, yeah, Metzger. Herr, yeah. Yeah. Herr Metzger, yeah. which is Butcher. Doctor Butcher. Yeah, yeah Doctor Butcher. Right. <laughs> which in our primal universe is a supervillain. Yeah. Yes, and Tom, um, you brought back. What was it the natural and forty two? The uh. David Dreamy Small. There he is. Thank you. <laughs> I love that voice. <laughs> I, of all the characters I've voiced, I love that one the most. Yes. So that, that that was a lot of fun bringing them in. And I loved the whole, uh, how Dan's character was just like constantly on the edge of, I know what movie that is. I can't figure it out though. And then as soon as he figures it out, he gets murdered violently. <laughs> <laughs> All of us is just can't get a break, can they? No, they really can't. They're, well, that's the joy about doing alternate universes. I just like the running theme that we're world-famous podcasters in this universe, but we're mediocre podcasts <laughs> everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just love how in, in in our skit universe like that's our job as professional podcasters but then we also make meta references to our real world jobs like you're in tech support you should know this and you're like no he wouldn't he's a podcaster <laughs> I, I love i love how fluid it is <laughs> oh, yeah and i love how like even though we're professional podcasters and what we do is podcast we have access to things like space elevators and time machines <laughs> and uh, artificial intelligence and replicants and we can join sports tournaments <laughs> it makes no sense what the rules are we've we'll tech support for nasa why yeah. we tech support for NASA? Yes. <laughs> what are we doing next week? Groundhog <laughs> Day. <laughs> yeah. Groundhog Day. Technically, we're wanted for murder, but that's okay. We'll yeah. deal with that in the next season. Oh uh, yes, hint hint. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I guess that's. Uh, but that was a lot of fun to record, write and record. Definitely showed off our air quotes range again. Yeah. So yeah, this is our skit for the Art of War. Enjoy. As you can see, we have you on camera killing the diplomat. On camera, in front of hundreds of people. And millions more watching online. What? No, no, those guys don't even look like us. Where's the trust? We've been working for the CIA for 15 years now. And that's why you're not in handcuffs right now, you son of a bitch. Yeah, you're almost mediocre agents. Figured we'd give you the benefit of the doubt. We just want some answers, dirtbag. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. This sounds oddly familiar. You want answers? I want the truth! Like, really familiar. You can't handle the truth! Oh, come on! You okay there, Dan? The, 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 the thing they just said, that whole back and forth. Drawing blanks there, buddy. Is that from like a song or something? A, a movie, I think? I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Movie? <laughs> don't watch movies. D did you order the code red? The Mountain Dew code red? Oh yeah, right over here, Agent Ricky. Oh, for freak's sake. Now! Now! Joe, why are you enjoying this? Oh! All right, they're out. Now we need to get out of here. Uh, uh, in a minute, I, uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm kind of tired. Yeah, I mean, me too. Ooh. Yeah, I can sit down for a bit. So what should we do now? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. We've been running for it feels like an hour. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I have. Oh god. I can't catch my breath. I haven't run like this. I haven't run like this since, oh, since Academy. Oh god. Oh come on, you pussies. You can't run five steps without losing your breath. Oh jeez. Okay. I think we're pretty deep inside this underwater drainage system now. I th I think we've I think we've lost them. Yeah, good call on this, Tom. I haven't heard them in a bit. Wait. Have we been here before? I don't think I have. Oh shit. No, that's them. We need to go. Come on. Alright, you apes, you wanna live forever? Keep it down. Wait, what was that? Shit, no, they're gaining. No, no, no what was that he said? Go, what, go, Tom, go. what was that thing you said? Don't worry about that. Move, 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 move. But I need to know. That was so run, familiar. Run, run, run. Guys, 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 there's a light. Hopefully it's an exit. Let's go, come on. Say that again. Yeah, something about a fight? No, God, a light. Exit, ahead. Yeah, I can't understand a word that you're saying, dude. Nah, uh, Josh just sucks at giving directions. No, what we have here is a failure to communicate. <sighs> 
Where'd you hear that from? No time. There they are! Shit, go, 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 go. God damn it, Tom. Why didn't you tell us about the 300 foot drop? I never said I've been here. Guys, we're gonna have to jump. Oh, for luck's sake. Wait, why is this oddly familiar? Put that gun down! Put that gun down now! Hands up, over the head! Seriously, this isn't ringing bells for anyone? I didn't kill my wife. I don't care! Oh, that's it, the fugitive! They're escaping! And we have Wakanda promise to erase humanity by carrying a resource. For the last time, you don't pilot elevators, you push buttons. I'm just saying, Josh could listen to the schedule or at least respect it once in a shit, Tom. You landed this right in the middle of a. God damn it, Tom. What? What happened? What? Uh, uh... God damn it, Tom. Again? What the hell's up with you and killing people in this damn thing? What the hell are you talking about? I thought we were just going to... God damn it, Tom. <laughs> um, I don't think this is the right universe either, guys. Plus, all these people kind of just saw us. Yeah, I think this is a wash. Yep. Let's get out of here, then. No, 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 no. I'm driving from now on. No, it's my turn. No, it goes me, then you. For so the last time, it's an elevator. You don't pilot elevators, you push buttons. Jesus, God. I really don't think these are the same guys we killed earlier. Yeah, these three look the same, but they have goatees. Goatee? Oh, what show was that from? They were bad guys if they had them goatees. Uh, uh, I had like a space journey, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. I think it was, uh, I think it was Wagon Train? I don't remember no wagons in no space. Was it like, um, I was like Flash Gordon, wasn't it? I think that works. Whatever. Wow, Joan, you're really not leading into the bit now, are you? Not really. No, I don't watch sports. <laughs> Well, there are some consistencies in the universe. Cut, print, do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the commentary on our previous skit. Previously Aliens. on Facebook. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Dan. I no, couldn't no, help myself. So this is the commentary on our skit, Aliens. We, well, Josh, I think, mostly wrote this one. Was it Josh or... You, yeah. Tom. You guys. So that, that was it. Was a Josh, uh, yeah, uh, production. Uh, Josh mostly wrote this one. Um, we we used to do co-writing sessions once a week, but the, the last few weeks, the three of us have been busy at different days, so it's been really hard to get together. So, Josh is kind of back to writing the bones of the skit, and Tom is back to picking apart those bones, and they're both back to fighting and blowing up my phone. So, yep, yep. Um, you know, yeah. yeah. Life is returning to normal. It's great. Um, good times. But Josh mostly wrote this skit. Uh, we obviously wanted to do something with space marines and aliens and face hugger bugs and all that stuff. And yeah. it, also keeping with the theme that we've been going this this journey of alt uses. Yeah, in, yeah. You know. So, yeah, this was the space marines and then them dying and the, quotes prime uses causing the mischief. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's been the running theme here. Not... Not directly like Mortal Kombat, but also not really accidentally. They just kind of set things in motion that would eventually get them in. So what was the inspiration behind this idea, Josh? Well, um, Aliens, the movie we were watching. <laughs> well, I knew I, I had a basic idea of what I wanted to do. When I uh, was building the scaffold, I knew that I wanted us... Like, originally when I conceived it, I wanted it to be sequential in order. I wanted it to start with the Primus is doing 
our business and basically waking up all the aliens that immediately bled into the marine us's landing as soon as we took off mm -hmm. and then they had to deal with the fact that we just woke up a thousand face hugger eggs and then i knew i wanted the uh interspersal to basically be them in the infirmary with one of them dealing with all of them dying but i realized that you one of them had to be dead like so wrote it out and then i realized that josh was the first one to get face hugged face raped whatever so it's like he had to die off, basically air quotes off screen. I'm like, but I want to be in the skit. How, how do I write myself in the skit? You know, because if Josh is dead off screen, so that's when I came up with the idea for Lieutenant George. Beloved extra George. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I, I use that elements from, I think I took the uh, Aliens, Alien 3. You know how like the alien never messed with her because she was impregnated with the queen alien? Right. Yeah. So I use that whole concept. That's why Dan says, it's like, yeah, it was just, Chilling in the hallway and it walked right past me. Which I laughed. That one was a. F I love that line. It's like he's walked on. Yeah, the voice is also in this one too. I I gotta give all of us props. We. Yeah, although you kept messing me up because the more you started to try to sound like a space marine, the more you started to come off as space Stevie Dreamy Smalls. <laughs> and it's like, like stop it. <laughs> Find a different voice. <laughs> Dude, I noticed that listening to this uh, skit too, because Tom would start going and then he'd get more and more yeah. Stevie Dreamy Smalls. Well, that's the hard. Well, Marine Tom is also from Alabama, which is yeah. where He's... Stevie Dreamy is. And every time I, my characters get exasperated, they get a little more high pitch. And then. It's Southern. He, <laughs> yes. And then, much like the Incredible Hulk, eventually Stevie Dreamy Smalls just comes out. But it's funny how it's like we all start like this gruff marine, and then we suddenly yeah, turn. That's all my southern, secret, you know? Captain. I'm always Stevie Dreamy Smalls. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering which one of you two would make that joke. But I do got to give Dan some credit when I, because uh, when I originally wrote it, I had the stinger completely different, and Dan's all like, "He read, he's like, yeah, it's funny. The stinger sucks." <laughs> He, he was nicer about it. He's yeah, like, the singer needs work. Well, you want an honest <laughs> feedback. I can't be like, I can't oh, be I, like, yeah, oh, yeah. it's great. It's all fantastic. I can't wait to read this. Please don't make me record this stinger. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was originally supposed to be um, us as xenomorphs yeah. talking. And Dan was right. It, it didn't land because also in the alien movies, the xenomorphs never talk. So they just hiss and yeah. cackle and, and scream sometimes. But like, that's it. So Dan did an editorial uh, critique and he's like you should take the part where we're messing everything up and put that in the stinger and i'm like but we just did that and i'm like it's okay to have reoccurring jokes during a single journey i mean that's been the running theme of it and also yeah. the making this kind of like the prequel it's like this is kind of a flashback episode more or less because the events of this happened before or during the uh, events of the first episode of this journey. Mm -hmm. So it's... Yeah, like, I know one of our contentions when we're all writing together or coming up with ideas together is Josh doesn't like to reuse the same joke over and over again, which, to his credit, is a good idea because you don't wear a joke too thin. But at the same time, I'm like, we're a comedy series. The skits are anyways. And we reoccurring jokes are okay. Seinfeld always had the way Kramer would just come through the door. Like, oh my God. And friends always had Joey like, how you doing? You know, so it's okay. It's okay. The, the trick is to not make it like good times where the character says dino might at the end of every sentence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or like they obsess about one thing yes. persistently. Yeah. It's kind of, mm -hmm. I like it to like uh, scrubs. Dr. Cox always called JD a girl's name. But it wasn't like totally flanderized. Kept it to once or twice an episode calling her, unless it was like one of those, like he made it a point in an episode that he's going to call her a different girl's name every time. But he usually kept it to once or twice mm -hmm. an episode call. And then normally he called JD newbie. He even called him newbie like in later seasons as well. So, but yeah, so Dan, Dan uh, did his final editorial on that one kind of, in my opinion, saved the stinger because it was not a good stinger before he told me it wasn't. It was one of those ones that I wrote and I'm like, I don't feel don't feel good about this one. I'm going to just throw this to the guys and let them see what they think. <laughs> when the guys... <laughs> I hate it! Well, no, I throw it to both you guys. Dan's the only one who reads it before <laughs> recording day. Mostly because I have to, I have to, because I write the intro connections and rundown part. So at some point in time, I'm going to open the script up and read what we got for the cold opens and stuff. So, Or if, because if I read it any with any time to actually work on the script... Dan's phone blows up. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's true too. So that's a conversation that's a for another time, though. But I think we've talked about this enough. I think it's time to let everyone yep. listen to it. Josh, say where you us out. Enjoy. This is why I joined the Space Marines. To boldly go where no man has gone before? Yeah, something about that, uh, something about that I like. Although these, uh, scouting missions are usually suicide missions. Remember what happened to our buddy Rob? Pour one out for that poor fool. That predator thing hunted him down like a movie podcaster. Didn't stand a chance. Hey, hey, hey. This is our first scouting mission, boys. Heads in the game. We are not gonna screw this up. Oh, yeah, we're good. Um, do those things look like eggs? I ain't never seen no eggs like that before. I think maybe we should report this back to command. Nope, nope, nope. Obviously there are flowers. Look at how one's blooming. You know, I don't know much about their botany, but, you know, that makes a little bit of sense there. Ooh, look at that cutie. Oh, look! They're all blooming. There's literally thousands of blooming flowers right now. <laughs> so, beautiful. I should have sent a poet. Look at all that slime. Guys, look, the inside of this flower is moving. Ooh. Yeah, don't they uh, learn this in uh, the grade school? Isn't that called the stoma? I think it's called the stigma. No, y'all are thinking the stigmata. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. They don't normally have, like, eight of them. Like spider legs. With little tiny teeth. Um, I'm beginning to think that this may not be a plant. Just gonna ignore that one and grab this one right here and take it back to the station. Yeah, I mean, you know, if this was dangerous, command wouldn't have sent us down here, right? I mean, I mean, leadership does have our best interests at heart. What's what's this thing over here, though? This is a. All right, well, let me reach down here and pluck this one on up. <laughs> I did not expect that. You should have picked up this one. Look at this! Look at this! It's gross! Uh, guys, I just uh, did a little bit of extra reconnaissance. These are definitely face rape alien bugs. Off my leg, you. Uh, yeah, we should get out of here, like, right. Well, Tom, looks like you're stranded alone. Again. Guess it's back to the. Oh! So all you face alien rape bugs are awake. Alright. This is a predicament. What now, Tom? Remember your training. What do you do when surrounded by a thousand face rape alien bugs? Yeah, let's watch the movie. Tom! Tom, wake up! It will not stop until you're all... Wait, what? Huh? What? What? Oh good, you're awake. Uh, wait, what, what? What's going on? Something is on the loose all in the ship and it's killing everyone. Wait just a minute, who the fuck is that? Who the fuck are you? Where the hell is Josh? Well, he died. Yeah, we found him in the cargo hold with a huge hole in his chest. It was disgusting. Oh, well, that's Lieutenant Josh over there. Uh, he's hanging out with us now. It's all good. Josh was a late addition to the crew anyways. Never quite fit in. I do suppose. I mean, they both do sound awfully lot alike. So I don't see myself getting confused by this predicament at all. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, um, so an alien thing, huh? Yeah, it killed most of the crew. But for some reason, it ain't come in the infirmary yet. Yeah, I saw it earlier. It just kind of walked dome past me. So is it just us then? More than likely, I haven't seen another soul in a couple hours. Well, let me just go ahead and poke my head out into the hallway and take a look-see. Alright, well, uh, yeah, I don't see <laughs> What the fuck? Oh, that. Yeah, you see that a dozen or so times, you kind of get numb to it. Why is the alien sitting at the door looking at you? What are you making googly eyes at it for? Just come on, shoot it! <laughs> yeah, we ran out of ammo a long time ago. Oh man, game over, man, game over. Oh my lord, what's that zit growing on your chest? Oh, oh, no. 
Mmm, I don't know. It's just uh, some heartburn. I had some Taco Bell earlier. Oh, God, I'm so sick. Oh, 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 mama. Oh, oh, it is everywhere. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, this is gonna hurt, huh? Well, you know, when you say it like that, it does make perfect sense. No need to think on it further. <laughs> oh, Come on, guys, hurry it up. This place stinks. I think I found one. Look. Oh, nice. But, uh, I like this one better. Why? Because I picked it. Oh, seriously, this is really creepy. Fog, mist, slime. Why do you need a souvenir from here? It's a callback to Buckaroo Banzai. Oh, yeah, callback. <laughs> Those things are always funny. Are they, though? Yes. Meh. No need to think about that any further. Okay, but we should hurry up and pick one and go. Fine. I just wanted to use the space setting on the elevator. Here, I'll just take this one. Uh, Alright. Uh, this has horror franchise written all over it. Oh, come on. Do you guys think I didn't do my research? I watched like two YouTube videos. All these eggs are dead. And they died like a thousand years ago or something. I don't know. I didn't finish the episode. Then why is everything so... Moist? I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, they're all starting to move. I think we woke them up, guys. Oh, come on. This can't be that day. Look, stomping my foot. Rawr! Yeah, see? Okay, they're, yeah, they're moving. But uh, if it was dangerous, do you think we'd be able to be here? Yes. Oh, come on, Tom. This isn't a movie. We'll be fine. All right, then. Let's get into our interdimensional space elevator and get out of here. Now that makes perfect sense, and I do not need to think on that any further. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep, yep. So right. let's get on out of here. All right, I get to drive this time. No, no, no. No, what you guys think of my catchphrase like that? I won't think about that any time, you know? Yeah, you we'll, know. We'll, we'll table it. Yeah, it's dumb. Whoever wrote that one just needs yeah. to go to school. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. No need to think on that further. Oh, Jesus Christ. For fuck's sake. Yeah. <sighs> this is why I joined the Space Marines. All right, well, up next, we have our skit for Terminator 2, Judgment Day. So this is the culmination of all of our crazy antics over the past five weeks, in our skits at least, well, and the episode. But uh, basically now, Prime, Tom, Josh, and Dan arrive back to their uh, offices, even though it's not really fully implied, but it's what it's supposed to be, only to get John Connors and, or Kyle Reese's from the future to come back and tell them in the forms of alternate dimension thems to warn them about themselves yes although we never really do explain how some of them know that we had any kind of impact on the events considering you know the aliens one they never really interacted they just had to deal tom, with the tom, repercussions tom, tom. tom. Yeah. the joke only works if you don't overthink it yeah oh that's right i'm not wearing the t-shirt today i i forgot yeah. to look down that's, yeah yeah okay yeah. It's the whole point of this one, and because it's like Terminator, we need to obviously have time travel. And I, always, I thought it would be funny as shit to have it be like the only people coming back are Josh and Tom's. So Dan's getting increasingly frustrated that no Dan's are showing up. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in our interspersal, Dan Bot makes his glorious debut. I like to call him the Daninator. <laughs> that works too. That works too. Because then it separates him from Tom Bot. <laughs> it does. It does. But it's fun fun coincidence that Tombot made his initial uh, debut in Jaws. That was our first episode with Tombot, which was a destination film of our second journey. Daninator, formerly known as Danbot, <laughs> made his debut in 
destination film for Terminator 2. All right, I want to I... change the name again. Live, live on commentary, I want to change the name again. The robot formerly known as Danbot. So it'll be Daninator, the, form up, <laughs> the robot formerly known as Danbot. Yeah, let's just go with all that. That's that just, works. It rolls off the tongue so flawlessly. It really does. It really does. And next time he shows up in a skit, that's what I'm going to call him. <laughs> it's Danbot, or it's Daninator. The robot formerly known as Danbot. And then, it, like, eventually it's just going to be, we're going to start removing parts of it. It's just like, he's just known as the former now. The <laughs> Like, we're going to remember any of this. Well, that's why we're recording it now. Yes. You know, it, it was kind of fun. Like, the skit, we had to bring everything full circle. And then, of course, we had to, like, well, we don't want to be using Tombot or Space Elevator next season. Or not next season, but next journey. So, how do we get rid of them? Just to have Dan and Ader or Dan Bot take the space elevator and yeah. there, it's gone. Yeah, considering I didn't expect us to use the time elevator the entire actually I did kind of accidentally on purpose put it in a way that we would wind up using the time elevator through the majority of this journey. But yeah, for an entire journey now we need to retire it for a bit. Yeah, just like Tom Bot was retired for like 30 or 40 episodes and he made his glorious return in uh what was it Blade Runner? Yes. Yeah. So and it's like it's one of those things we're taking Dan and Ader, the Dan Bot formerly known as Dan Bot, putting them <laughs> up on a shelf with the space elevator. So keep on lookout for them later on. Yes. When will we bring them back? Probably when we run out of ideas. Usually it'll it'll happen. I I'm thinking around Christmas. It'll be the holiday season. We're either going to be working a bunch or dealing with family, both of which are stressful and horrible. We'll all be like, we need to come up with a skit for this week's episode. And I got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing. Tombot. 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 (laughs) Time elevator. We'll bring in um, Stevie Dreamy Smalls. Um, Joe. We'll just do all callbacks. The entire skit's going to be callbacks. You know, the whole yeah. reason we come up with characters is so we can use them later on when we don't have an idea. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's probably what's going to happen. It'll be around Christmas or Thanksgiving. It'll be the holiday season. And it'll be like one of those weeks where like it's just work and family and travel. And then it's like, what do you guys want to do? I don't know. Tombot? Yeah. Tombot. That works. <laughs> that works. But back to this skit. Yes. <laughs> but no, I, lo- I loved how Danbot came in and went full Arnold. And all he kept doing was saying phrases. Yeah, I, li- I did like doing the random movie quotes in my least worst Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonation I could do. It was it was good. It, I liked it. I liked it. I didn't have to do too much tweaking. Although, I mean, I had to still do some to make you sound like a robot. But all, all in all, this was a fun one to edit and also a painful one to edit. This was why, one of the reasons why the final episode, the Destination episode, was had to push back the, the release date twice almost a third time it it was so awesome it took tom a long time to contain it yeah this was during the time when we were recovering from my vacation basically and we lost our buffer week because normally we'll have two episodes in the pocket waiting for one to be released on tuesday and we'll be starting to edit the next episode we have like at least three or four days to listen to it before it goes live but Mm -hmm. like the past couple weeks it's been we record on friday and release on tuesday and we've had a couple of Thursday releases, and this one's taken the longest time, just because we're catching up. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Contrary to our characters, the three of us are not professional podcasters. We actually have to go to work, and we have families and stuff we have to deal with. So, And, uh, you know, our editor especially, he's got his own job and family and, and significant others to deal with. So it's like, not deal with, but just like... You can't ignore everybody just because you have to edit this thing. So Only like 60% of the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, you just learn to collectively tune them out. Yeah. Although, you know, this past one, a couple of jerks had thrown me a surprise birthday party. Jerks. Assholes. Yeah. You yeah. just need better friends. Yeah. Clearly. I mean, don't they know I have a podcast to edit? Yeah. You had to go to your mom's retirement party. But no, no. So, anywho, this is our Terminator skit. It was a lot of fun to record. Yeah. And just, uh, Dan's yeah. a good monologuer. Yeah, and enjoy the uh, culmination of the vacation determination. It was a fun journey to record. It was. It really yes, was. It was. Right. Well, enjoy. For the last time, will you two please stop? I'm pushing the buttons. I don't care what you say. Dan, stop it. It's my turn. No, I want to see what this button does. No, but I want to see what this button does. Ooh, let me turn this thing. What's this flip do? Stop. No, no, no. Gotcha. Oh, look at that. We're home. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. We are. Okay. Thank you. Fellows, quickly, wait. I know this may sound weird, but I'm from the future. Sweet. Wait. How do we know, know you're from the future? 
because past me is right next to you. That does make sense. But how am I British in the future? No time to explain! Look, I've come here to warn you all. There is a group of us's going around time and space, killing their multiverse components! It's a massacre! See, see what happens is, what happened? I will start from the beginning. Yeah, yes. just, just stop, stop, stop. Wait, wait, wait. Time travel? Like, are we talking like back to the future kind of time travel or Star Trek kind of time travel? Because there's a big difference. What? Can't be a Bill and Ted scenario. We already did that bit. What are you going on about? No, this sounds more like a Loki verse thing to me. Is this a Loki verse thing? <laughs> no, th this is a completely original idea of Loki thing. It can't be a Loki thing, otherwise there'd be a Highlander version of one of us by now. Boys, listen, I'm from the future. Caught it. Did those same blackguards in the elevator kill your Josh and Dan as well, Scottish Josh? Aye, they murdered them in cold blood. My god, that's terrible. What bastards. Yeah, terrible. That must have been bad. Yes, they pretty much cued us out, right? Woo! Wait, are you dead? Yes, I'm from a world where we competed in a mortal combat, and those sons of bitches were ringers and murdered us for sport. Now I'm stuck talking like I'm from a 1940s horror film. Bro. Yes, I know those blackguards. They've gone to hundreds of worlds murdering everyone. Yeah, they came to my universe too, and they killed me and my friends. Wait, then how are you here? We needed a callback to last week's episode. But then why couldn't it be like, you know, other Dan? Other me? Well, he's dead. Whoa! Guys, listen! I'm 90s Tom! I've come from the future to warn you of a grave danger! Where are the future me's? Guys, listen! I'm from the future! Whoa! What a audacious robot arm, new Josh! Why, thanks! Where are my future me's? Did no me survive? Guys, I'm from the future. I've uh, come to warn you. I'm also Future Tom, also played by Keanu Reeves. Oh, for fuck's sake. This is going to go on for a while, isn't it? On the plus side, we technically have several guests for our destination episode now. So, problem solved, right guys? No, it's just lazy writing. Guys, I'm from the future. I need help with a script. Dan, could you start the thing, please? Yeah, yeah, Alright, Josh is on this side of the room, Tom's on this side of the room. This shit's getting annoying. There's like 50 Toms and 50 Joshes. And, and no Dans. This is crazy. I've never seen so many... me's. Mmm. Dan, don't break your arm jerking yourself off there, Tom. Speaking of which, I'm hungry. Can we sneak out and go grab some tacos? Yes. Yes, please. I have had my fill of Tom and Josh. Gross. Don't start. Sorry, Jiminy Christmas. You guys done? Because they're distracted. Let's sneak out the door. Now, let's go. And then Dan said this god-awful sea eel penis joke. Well, he laughed. But we laughed out of pity. Oh my god, oh, mine yeah. did that. Oh, never so stop. Oh, 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 now I have to oh, What the hell? What the deuce? Dan? Bro, why are you naked? Gross. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> well, you didn't say please. You tell him, Biker Josh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You talking to me? Oh, well. My turn. For fuck's sake. We at the Council of Toms do not approve of this, man! They call it the Royale with cheese. And now he's just rattling off random catchphrases. Go ahead. Make my day. I don't want to. Wait, wait, why are we only fighting him one at a time? Let's run! Let's no, run! No, run! 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 You had me at hello. No! No! Let us out! Let us out! Why are the doors locked? Why 
Who the door's locked? Who the door locked the door? We're all Tom and Josh. It's one of us has to have the key. Oh, God! We're trapped. Wrong. If you build it, he will come. What the hell is that? Where did he get the goddamn minigun? Oh my god. Bullets! Super Tom's one weakness! Boom! I feel the need. The need. Full speed. Then she said... <laughs> Get this. Okay. Then she said, "No, that's not an eel. That's my penis." <laughs> yeah, that that was. That, I I love hearing yeah, that joke a, a twentieth time, Dan. Whoa! What happened. the fuck happened in here? Oh dear God! Oh my God! I didn't. I, oh gee, it's everywhere. His head's over there. His body's over there. His body and his head are there. Oh dear God! Oh my God! It's so disgusting. There's blood. Where, where's the space elevator? Oh, sexy Tom, no! I am not cleaning that up. Not that it. it. Not, damn it. The unknown future rolls towards us. I face it for the first time with a new sense of hope. Because if an asshole can learn the value of my time, maybe Tom and Josh can too. Dan, for the last time, stop monologuing and get back to cleaning! Stupid freaking entrails. Just... Most of them had giant holes in their chest. How can there be this many guts to clean? Uh, doing great, Dan. Yeah, don't forget the corners over there. Oh, stupid. I don't even understand why we're mopping a carpet. Seriously, though, that was just an obscene amount of alternate universes where we wound up murdered. Like, what kind of monsters spend six weeks floating around killing themselves? Talk about a sick sense of fucking humor. I don't know about you guys, but I think we need to get some sort of protection. <laughs> yeah, I know what kind of protection. Not, uh, no, but... stop, stop. Real protection, Josh. Like something that can terminate our problems before they become problems. Something that makes sure Dan survives for a change. Okay, fine. What'd you have in mind? Not a Tom bot, I hope. I haven't thought of anything yet, but I'm sure we'll come up with something. Dun 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 dun. You want me to make you a Dan bot, don't you? Yes. God damn it! And that does it for this episode. I bet you're wondering why I'm getting a little bit more airtime tonight than Tom or Dan. I took the editorial reins from Tom, and I pieced together this episode. So if you like it, you're welcome. If it sucks, blame Tom. This is my first episode editing on my own. That's why there's no flashy sound effects or anything, because I'm still learning. But I digress. As a reminder, you can find us at firepitpodcast.com. There you can find links to Spotify, iTunes, Amazons, or wherever you want to get your podcasts. Regular episodes are Tuesdays at 6 p.m., so please like and subscribe wherever you do subscribe from. It really helps us out, helps us in the search metrics. We appreciate it. But if you want to chat with us, you can join us on our Discord server. The link is in the episode description, or you can find us at discord.me slash firepit. There you'll find another invite to our Discord server. And since there was no interspersal guy, that pretentious dude who normally is in the middle of the episodes... You can also email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com if you want to send us a nice long-winded message that we will reply to. But you can like our Facebook page, or you can follow us at Twitter. Our handle is at firepitcce. Both are linked in the episode's description, too. So we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. <laughs>